Hello everyone, welcome again. In this video we will do a couple of questions which are given in chapter number one of the lecture notes. I won't be sharing the screen with you in this lecture. Please make sure you download the lecture notes and uh, come to chapter number one where you see a couple of small examples and a comprehensive example. Now I will do the comprehensive example in the next video whereas we will do the uh, example number one and example number two in this lecture. All right. Now, before we uh, move to this, these specific examples and the comprehensive example, I would strongly encourage you to do these examples. Now, this is page number four of lecture notes. Uh, I want you to please pause the video and uh, have a go at it on uh, example number one and example number two, and then on page number five, which is comprehensive example, which I will attempt in the next video. But I want you to attempt these three examples, example one, example two, and comprehensive example. Now please pause the video and have a go at it. <coughs> Excuse me. Now let's try uh, this question together now. Uh, in example number one it says, <coughs> excuse me, for the tax year 1617, uh, Peter has a pension income of 8,000 pounds. Now he has got some pension income. Now you remember that uh, uh, Pension is an amount which you can withdraw when you get retired. Now, 25% of pension income you can withdraw tax-free. However, if you want to withdraw in excess of 25%, that will be withdrawn as pension income and you will be taxed accordingly. Now, what happens is here that because it says pension income, so it means that it is in excess of 25%. That's why it is saying pension income. Excuse me. All right, so let's go ahead and start the question. So it says a pension income. So first of all, he has got some uh, a pension income. Uh, sorry, the pen is not working. Let me try the other one. <coughs> yeah, so it, he has got some pension income. pension income and it will go into the non-savings income so we'll write that down as well so that is non-savings and the amount of pension income is eight thousand pounds so go ahead and put eight thousand pounds that is pension income and then we'll write down savings income as well so let's go ahead and put savings income as well just in case. Next amount is savings income. Here you go. So let's put the savings income as well. So the savings income. In this case, he's got forty-five hundred pounds worth of savings income, and uh, he has got some dividends as well. So let's put the dividends as well. So dividends of uh, forty-five hundred pounds. Sorry, nine thousand pounds. So uh, these are dividends. All right. Now he has got three sources of income. Now it says calculate his income tax liability. Now the normal way which I told you and which is a normal way to do is uh, we will total all of these. So let's go ahead and put the total, do the total of it. So if we make the total, it comes to 8,000 pounds, 4,000 and 9,000 pounds and total of that amount is going to be 12, uh, 21,000 pounds, 9, 13 and 21,000 pounds, yeah. So total is uh, uh, 21,000 pounds, that is total income. Next thing is to do, uh, uh, next thing to do is to deduct the personal allowance, isn't it? So personal allowance. Now the normal way to deduct the personal allowance is uh, first to deduct out of the non-savings income, then to deduct from the saving. <coughs> excuse me. Then to deduct from the savings income, and finally, if there is anything left, then we will deduct it out of the dividends income. All right. Now that is the normal way to deduct. Now, if we follow our normal way, uh, we will deduct eight thousand pounds out of the non-savings income, and the three thousand pounds out of the savings income. So let's go ahead and put this one. So uh, 8,000 pounds out of the non-savings 
and three thousand pounds out of the savings income and the tax liability is going to be i mean tax uh, uh, taxable income is going to be one thousand pounds and nine thousand pounds here all right now while calculating the tax while calculating the income tax liability what happens is that this one thousand pounds will be covered by the starting rate band isn't it because first five thousand pounds of the savings income is covered by uh, is covered by the um, starting rate band so first of all, uh, f and this will be scored by the starting rate band anyway. Out of this 9,000 uh, 9, pounds, uh, uh, 5,000 will be covered by the nil rate band of the dividends. You remember there will be a nil rate band of dividends, uh, so uh, of 5,000 pounds, even if you are a basic rate taxpayer, a uh, higher rate taxpayer or additional rate taxpayer. So what happens is that out of that 5,000 is 0% anyway, which is covered by the nil rate band. Uh, so he will only have to pay a tax on the four thousand pounds, and we will calculate so four thousand pounds uh, multiplied by whatever the rate is. All right. So he will only have to pay tax on the four thousand pounds. Now that was the normal way to do the uh, to calculate the tax liability. Now let's do in other way, some other effective way. Now while calculating the um, while calculating the uh, personal allowance while deducting the personal allowance what happens is in the previous case which I just showed you we deducted first from the non savings income then from the savings and finally from the dividends income all right so let's go ahead and do it in a little different way so we will deduct first from the non savings income now the remaining 3000 I will deduct it out of the dividends income all right now if I if I deduct it out of the dividends income what is the scenario now there will be zero here, four thousand pounds worth of savings income, and six thousand pounds worth of dividends income. All right. Now this four thousand pounds again will be covered by the starting rate band, isn't it? That will be covered by the starting band. Whereas five thousand pounds out of this one will be covered by nil rate band. So what I need to do is I will only have to pay tax on 1000 pounds in the case of dividends that is the correct way to do it so what happens is that uh, we will have to pay a tax uh, only on the 1000 pounds worth of dividends as opposed to the previous case where we ha would have paid extra tax and that is the right way to do uh, the tax uh, that is the right way to calculate the tax all right uh, so let's move to our example number two now please uh, example number two so in <coughs> in example number two it says for the tax year 1617 alam has pension income of 7000 pounds uh, and savings income of 6500 pounds and calculate uh, his taxable um, income tax liability so let's calculate his income tax liability. He's, he's got pension income of seven thousand pounds. So let's see seven thousand pounds of pension, and obviously pension goes to the non-savings income. And for savings income, he's got somehow uh, he's got some uh, savings income as well. So savings and savings of uh, sixty-five hundred pounds. Right, so he's got some pension income and he's got some savings income of sixty-five hundred pounds as well. All right, now <coughs> having said that, that because he has got uh, sixty-five hundred pounds worth of savings income and seven thousand pounds worth of uh, dividend uh, worth of uh, pension income, uh, next thing we need to do is to deduct the uh, personal allowance out of it. All right, if we want, if you want, want to make the total of that, you can make the. A total figure as well so uh, let's see what the total is 6500 pounds 7000 pounds so altogether 13500 all right now when we need to did uh, next thing to do is to deduct the personal allowance so deduct the personal allowance uh, sorry I beg your pardon uh, so next thing is to deduct the personal allowance so if we deduct the personal allowance, first we need to deduct it out of the non-savings income and then the remaining one, so in this case would be 4,000 pounds, 
we will deduct it out of the savings income. So the remaining is 2,500 pounds uh, worth of savings income and that's what uh, we will have to pay tax on because this is covered by the personal allowance. 4,000 pounds is also covered by the personal allowance because total personal allowance is uh, 11,000 pounds. So he's eligible for 11,000 pounds personal allowance. Now this is the amount on which he will have to pay tax. But he's fortunate because uh, this is covered by the starting rate band. Remember that first 5,000 pounds uh, within the savings income is covered by the uh, personal allowance, uh, is covered by the starting rate band. All right, now if it is in excess of um, uh, 5,000 pounds, only then he will have to pay, uh, he will have to pay tax. All right, because uh, it is the uh, first 5,000 pounds, so it will be covered by the uh, starting rate band. All right. Now another thing to do is, uh, I want you to think about it, I have another question for you uh, with regards to Mr. Alam uh, in this uh, example number two. Uh, assuming that Mr. Alam is your friend and he asked you that because he has got pension income, all right? So he withdraws only 7,000 pounds out of his pension. I told you that only 25% uh, of the pension uh, income can be taken tax-free. Now, whatever he gets in excess of, whatever he withdraws in excess of 25% out of his pension fund, it will be received as pension income and it will be taxed accordingly as well. Now, because it says pension income, so it means that he will uh, have withdrawn in excess of 25% uh, what it was, what he was allowed tax-free and uh, he will be taxed as well. Now he has only withdrawn 7,000 pounds in this case in, from his pension fund and he's one of your friend and he's asking your advice that uh, I was scared uh, that I might uh, have been charged more tax. That's why I have only withdrawn 7,000 pounds worth of pension income this year. Now could you please tell me, that's what uh, your friend uh, he's asking you. Now Mr. Alam is asking you that could you please tell me that how much extra amount, if any, how much extra amount uh, I can withdraw from my pension fund without incurring a tax liability, assuming that rest of the circumstances are exactly the same. All right, so he's got uh, 6,500 pounds of savings income, a pension income of 7,000 pounds, but he wants to know that how much extra money he can withdraw uh, out of his uh, pension fund without incurring a tax, uh, tax liability. Now could you please please pause the video and have a think about it and let me know. <clears throat> uh, I hope that you have, uh, I mean I am I, hopeful that you have done it in a correct way. Now let's see, now because he has only used 2500 pounds worth of uh, starting rate band. Now his total starting rate band was 5000 pounds but he has only used 2500 pounds. All right, and other 2500 pounds is wasted. Now it is straightforward. So this 2500 pounds he has used, but another 2500 pounds is still left. So Mr. Alam can withdraw extra 2500 pounds. So extra 2500 pounds, I will just write it down here. So extra 2500 pounds he can withdraw because uh, it is being wasted. A starting rate band is being wasted, that's why he can withdraw extra 2500 pounds. All right. Now another thing is, <clears throat> on top of starting rate band in savings income, uh, he, what he can get is a nil rate band. Now because he is a basic rate taxpayer, so he will get £1,000 of uh, nil rate band as well, savings income nil rate band. So that is also being wasted, so that can also be withdrawn. So the total amount that he can withdraw, that Mr. Alam can withdraw is £3,500. Uh, this is the extra amount on top of £7,000 pension income. So this is the amount which he can withdraw without incurring a tax liability, without incurring an extra income tax liability. Now how can he withdraw? Let's uh, rewrite um, the figures, all right? So £7,000, we'll just write it down as a, a, a little different. Then what I need to do is I need to um, change these figures as well and this one and this one and this one as well <coughs> all right now in pensions income uh, he had seven thousand pounds but now he can withdraw, uh, withdraw extra three thousand five hundred so total will be ten thousand five hundred 
10,500 you can withdraw extra here 10,500 Personal allowance 10,500 can be withdrawn or can be deducted from this one the remaining 500 will be deducted out of the savings income so the taxable income will be 6,000 pounds out of this 6,000 pounds 5,000 pounds will be covered by the starting rate band at the rate of 0% another 1,000 pounds will be covered by the nil rate band savings income nil rate band that is nil rate band and that is starting rate band so eventually he will not have to pay any tax liability but he can withdraw extra 3500 pounds worth of uh, pension income all right so likewise any friend can ask you anything because you are studying acca so hopefully you will be able to help them all right and it is obviously a legal way to do it so that's it for this video and uh, we will see uh, our uh, comprehensive example in the next video and uh, now please make sure that you have a go at the comprehensive example uh, and try it yourself then watch me do it in the next video all right so that's it for now and i will see you in the next video and before i wind up i will just move on one side if you want to note down everything i've written on the board all right uh, i will see you in the next video then thank you and goodbye